We all know the undeniable fact that these days, more than ever, we see the bonding of speed and technology beyond control. To put it simple, you might ask questions like, how fast is your car and how fast is your phone or computer, just to know if the latest upgrades and improvements are used in each of them. So when we are talking about the computer, which one of those hardware components determine or guarantee a higher speed? Well, there is no correct answer to a wrong question, since each part of a computer like motherboard, RAM, graphic, or CPU has its own role to play when processing data to speed things up. And today, finally after a long wait, we received the AMD's latest CPU R9 7950X3D to review and move on to build our gaming PC that we have been waiting for. Feature sharp here, let's get it started. It's always good to have a basic knowledge of any topic first before going deeper into specs. You might skip this part but here we go anyways. What is a CPU in short? CPUs are sort of like the brains of your computer. Everything you do goes through CPU which makes it an essential part of every PC. Whether it's an AMD or an Intel processor, they all have some common tasks to do which are reading, processing, moving information in form of bits in nanoseconds. And by bits, we mean the binary digit, a basic unit of information which can be either 1 or 0. Think of it this way. Bits act as building blocks for larger pieces of information and are used in binary code. And binary code is computer language based on yes or no or true or false logic. Another basic thing to know is the clock speed, which is how many times per second a CPU completes a work cycle. What about cores, threads and cache then? The easiest way to explain is imagining each core as a worker being able to do only one task at a time. But in order to get things done faster, multi-threading steps in to optimize CPU's workload and allowing each of those CPU cores to perform two sets of tasks at the same time. And as far as the cache goes, it's a smaller, faster memory located closer to a processor core that stores copies of the data from frequently used main memory locations and they have three physical levels level 1 and 2 or L1, L2, which are smaller, faster and closer to the core, then L3 cache, which is larger but slower. Now going back to AMD Ryzen 7000 series X3D processors, as you see the three CPUs were launched on March with different price tags. The AMD is claiming that this Ryzen 7950 X3D should be the absolute fastest gaming CPU that you can buy while using less power than its direct competitor Intel. Let's not waste anyone's time if this is the only reason you are here for, so here it goes. Is it the world best leading gaming CPU as they claimed? Of course not. Is it industry leading power efficient? Yes indeed. Now let's dig deeper into it. The new X3D processors are many ways similar to the existing 7000X processors with one big difference that is. The X3D comes with a big chunk of AMD 3DV cache. Actually the 3DV cache idea was tested before on previous generation. Ryzen 7 5800 X3D and it turned out extra cache memory can really help to improve gaming performance. The interesting thing here is that while Ryzen 7 5800 X3D had only one block of 8 cores, the Ryzen 9 chip comes with two core complexes that have 8 cores each and the 3DV cache is only added to one of those, so it has an asymmetric design. The idea behind this is that one half of the chip will benefit all those games and apps that prefer a lot of cache while the other half will deal with games and apps that prefer a higher frequency instead. In other words, the 7950X3D has three chiplets. There is one I.O. die, there are two core dies or CCDs, there is 16 total cores and 32 threads just like a regular 7950. The big difference is addition of that 3DV cache which gives the 7950X3D a total of 128MB of L3 cache across the whole CPU. Also AMD confirms that the left CCD oriented with the IO die at the bottom is always the one with the V cache and that's where potential performance issues are predicted to be from since only one of the two CCDs that has the extra cache will run at the lower frequency than the unit without the extra cache. This complication is something AMD has been working with Microsoft on to help build mechanism to control for games and windows but they have also built some optimizers that you can install and you should otherwise you are going to have worse performance than expected. So before anything, be sure to install the latest chipset drivers and also the latest BIOS to get the ultimate results. 
The things in the chipset you need to install include AMD PPM and AMD Performance Optimizer. These are new and only available for X3D CPU. The TTB of the X3D chip is much lower than 7950X and its rival Intel's latest generation. Looking at the CPU power consumption when gaming in 4K resolution, the new 7950X3D is significantly more efficient using only 85 watts of power on average compared to 122 watts for 7950X and 132 watts for 13900K or in heavy GPU load. The only exception might be the idle power consumption because both AMD CPUs continue to draw a lot more power than the i9, but it's possible that AMD can somehow fix it with a BIOS update or something for each certain motherboard. With all that said, are we here only to lower our power consumption with all that money for the CPU? Well, for productivity, you can totally count on that. It outperforms two times better than the 7950. But if you are buying one for gaming, then it might be worth waiting until all the tests and benchmarks are done for the 7800X3D, because that CPU seems to be more ideal to perform better in gaming based on its free cache behavior. Also, you will end up saving a lot of money as well. You will understand better by looking at the benchmarks right after this, but wrapping things up, you will notice that Intel does hold up better in 4K resolution in gaming, and when it comes to the full HD or productivity and consumption, the AMD has the lead. Personally, I think AMD was focused too much on power consumption and productivity that it put a setback on achieving their third goal or claim, which is ultimate gaming performance. So many gamers are getting their hopes up on 7800X3D, even knowing it's almost 700 MHz lower in frequency than 7950X3D. But for many games, easier recache access is something that comes first rather than the higher frequency. Also, AMD has gone with quite a complex solution to make the 7950X3D work correctly with all those extra tuning and driver or bias updating, but we never know how future updates by Windows could turn things around. Now, I have to give credit where credit is due. These amazing benchmarks, even with simulated 7800X3D results, are done by Hardware Unbox. He does some great work, so I will throw down a few links to their channel in the description. The graphics card is often going to be the single most expensive component of any build, so I always advise setting up your goals first before setting up your PC build. In case you are into both gaming and productivity, then today is your lucky day as we just finished covering up AMD's best CPU ever made and now we are going to talk about AMD's by far best graphics card. This is going to be a very interesting combination, two of the AMD's latest products but if you think this time you will get away with this and end up saving a lot of money because after all, well, this is just an AMD, then you need to think again. AMD's reference 7900 XTX card had so many issues piled up like overheating that Sapphire team decided to take things into their own hands and create a custom built graphics card, Sapphire Natural Plus RX 7900 XTX, featuring a 420 watt power limit, a boost clock of 2680 MHz, and a modern design. This is without a doubt one of the best looking graphics cards. Safari has opted for a grey shroud that curves nicely around both ends of the card. Although made of plastic, the shroud does feel pretty rigid in the hand, which is thanks to the internal aluminum magnesium alloy that Safari claims is designed to improve structural stability. A long RGB diffuser can also be found on either side of the shroud. Safari also includes a 5 volt ARGB on the card itself, so you can synchronize the lighting with your motherboard. But in order to do that, you need to download the trick software and set the LED setting to external source. A 4-pin PWM fan header is placed next to the ARGB connection to allow a chassis fan to be controlled based on the GPU's own fan curve. Speaking of fans, we have three of them here and these are Sapphire Angular Velocity Fan Blade design with the company claiming up to 19% more airflow compared to the previous generation. 
Each fan measures approximately 98mm across and with Safar's quick connect feature in them, each fan can be individually removed after taking out just a single screw per fan. This model is definitely much bigger than the reference design. The Nitro Plus measures in at 320x133x71.6mm, so basically it's both longer and wider than the RTX 4090 Founders Edition and also weighs in at under 1.94 kilos. Moving to the back side, we notice the back plate itself doesn't quite extend to the entire length of the car, instead leaving a small gap for airflow between the end of back plate and the internal metal frame. We can also see that a dual bias switch is placed on the back of the car as well. Technically, this is a three-way switch, the primary bias, the secondary bias in the middle, and a software switch option so that you could change between the two bias modes within the trick software without physically moving that switch. For the bias mode themselves, bias 1 has a 420 watt total board power and it has a 2680 MHz boost clock, while the bias 2, which is the secondary, that has a lower 350 watt total board power and a boost clock of 2500 MHz. Taking out the other side, we can also note triple 8 pin PCI power connectors and that's an extra 8 pin compared to the reference model. Sapphire also includes two HDMI 2.1 and two DisplayPort 1.4 video output. Looking at the PCB here, Sapphire has opted for a 17-phase VRM for the GPU and a 3-phase VRM for the memory. 70 amps monolithic power systems MP87997 MOSFETs are used across the board. With the GPU VRM controlled by a monolithic MP2857 and the monolithic MP2856 controller is used for the memory VRM. As for the cooling system, Sapphire has brought back the VaporX for the Nitro Plus, meaning a copper vapor chamber is used to directly contact the GPU and memory modules while 7 heat pipes draw heat out into the fin stack. And that aluminum magnesium frame we mentioned earlier does also serve another purpose, as it does contact the VRM to provide extra cooling with some thermal pads. And just to be sure, Safar also uses thermal pads on the underside of the back plates too. It's time to move on to the testing, but before ending the video by showing some benchmarks, I must add in case you are pushing this card for its maximum limit, then expect a significant power draw increase while playing some games in 4K up to 520 watts. And the other downside to it could be the price. This graphics card carries a hefty price tag of over $1100, but I think it's fair to say they brought such magnificent changes into it with amazing results that you can just trust AMD on this one the same way I did. And last but not the least, shout out to the guys for their efforts on these tests. Make sure to check them out from the links down below in the comments.